All right, guys, for this trek into DIY tech, we're going to take a look at another way to control servos. So we've looked at um, controlling servos directly with your microcontroller. We've looked at uh, servo, different uh, servo testers. And this time we're going to take a look at this uh, servo controller from Adafruit. And uh, we'll look at why you want to use one of these and, uh, you know, the pros and cons of, of using it. So here we go. All right, guys, here we are. This doesn't come with headers or anything soldered on. So we're going to do that right now before we get started with anything else. But um, first, I need to tell you, uh, I bought this myself. This uh, this was not provided by Adafruit. I'm just using this because um, this is a very good uh, version of this. Um, there's several out there, but um, this one is uh, very well supported, and they have a lot of tutorials online for it. So, one thing I'm going to let you know is the, these uh, these header strips, uh, you can cut these down. So, I've cut this a section of this down, as you can see, and you just... You can just cut it down with your wire cutters. You know, you count the, the an extra pin, cut it at the extra pin, making sure that you cut it uh, just before the pin that you want to save. Meaning if you want four, you go one, two, three, four, five, and cut at the fifth one. And I use a hobby file to... Uh, smooth out the cut after I make the cut and so I just file the side that I cut and I wind up with uh, something like this and you see how smooth that is and to get it in here because I want everything flat on here for a subsequent project I've bent all the pins over and so I just take a small screwdriver and I go and carefully bend the pins over and that'll give us a 90 degree <clears throat> now they sell 90 degree uh, versions of this but that just makes it easier to uh, you know you buy one and use it for everything these pins are long enough to go through still even though they've been bent so you can see there they come through enough for me to solder on there and now by using our time dilation device we're going to speed this up so you don't have to suffer through all the soldering. So there we go, all soldered up. Check all your solder joints, make sure you didn't make any bridges. And there we go, we're ready to go. So we're gonna make a video on soldering for you guys, but uh, it's a subject for another video. All right, guys, what you see here is uh, I've tried to give you three different examples of how the servos are, are in there. So I'm not going to go too deep into each one of these because, again, we're just doing a comparison. And I'm just trying to show you that uh, you can use this uh, servo controller to free up some pins and some uh, 
and you know make the workload a little bit less for your microcontroller. But the first example here, uh, we've got your off-the-shelf um, servo tester. So we've we've done a video on that, so you guys can see how the pulse widths and all that go across. Um, and uh, in the second situation, we have the servo is running directly from your microcontroller. So we're using Arduino Unos. They look different, but um, the core is the same. So programming and um, outputs and all of that is the same. So you'll be able to see the functionality uh, when you're using just the microcontroller versus when you're using the microcontroller and uh, the servo controller. So I've tried to keep these as close to, and I'll show you now, as close to what it looks like uh, when you have the, uh, from the examples that they provide online. What we're looking at here, the first one that we have on the left here is uh, the first setup we have with the uh, Adafruit uh, controller. The cool thing about these is you'll see uh, you have inputs and outputs on both sides. That just passes straight through. And then you have a series of solder jumpers at the top. And you can use those to set different addresses. So you can really have 64 servos running on there. And the cool thing is, uh, regular Arduino Uno, you have 12 outputs that you can use for the servos. And even then, sometimes when you're using interrupts and things like that, that can uh, that can interf they can interfere with each other. So uh, with this setup, you can really use uh, your <laughs> you can use sixty four servos all run from one microcontroller, and all you need is power. Uh, of course, you you're gonna need the ground. You don't have to necessarily power this board from your uh, microcontroller's power. There's more than enough power there, but if you wanted to isolate that uh, in terms of you don't want to use any of the power from the microcontroller because you're running other sensors, for example, you can certainly put a 5-volt uh, power supply into there. And also, you have separate power going into your servos. The reason you want to do that uh, is because if the servos, you have a large number of servos, they all move at once, and the voltage dips on your system, you could have a brownout condition on your microcontroller, meaning your microcontroller will not have enough power to run and it will shut itself down. Um, so we have a battery pack here that's going to supply the power for our examples here. So now I'm going to go and show you the Arduino um, version of this. So this is the, the Arduino setup. And again, we've tried to keep the wire colors and everything as close um, to the example as possible so you guys can, can follow along, do your own research on this. But um, you can see the two setups there. And now these are both being run from uh, the Arduino. So um, we're going to put the sketches side by side here so that you can see what the code looks like for each one of those. And so we'll go ahead and run. Uh, we'll go ahead and run our um, servo examples or the, the physical hardware. We'll turn on the battery so you can see how each one of them runs. And I'm also going to now uh, put, I'll put the servo tester in automatic so you can see the differences there. We've got these slips of paper here so you can get some contrast there and see what they're actually doing. All right, I didn't put that in earlier so that you could see, you know, where the wires were running and stuff. So, but anyway, you can see immediately that these two are getting to the full range, uh, full range on, on uh, the ser their servos, their respective servos are, are hitting full range. Um, this guy is not. And this is something that I've discovered 
as I was using these servo testers. After a while, I discovered that, hey, the servos weren't being set properly, and um, this is the reason why. So the, uh, the PWM signal coming out of this guy does not hit the lowest and highest uh, on there. And I found that most of this type of servo um, tester, the, the nine out of the 10 that I have used do the same thing. So that's one thing to be aware of if you're, if you're doing RC stuff, um, you know, you're trying to set legs on robots and things like that. The servo tester can probably help you find the center point but you will not find the um, the full extent of the servos travel with these guys. So you can see there, um, now the speed, uh, the difference in speed is is this, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, so, and these are left and right respective. So this is the, this is the setup that we have here. So the, our right sketch is the setup that we have there. And you can see that it's just stepping through, um, stepping through all the positions. Uh, and it's got, it's got a little bit of a delay there so that um, the servo can actually reach that position. There's no feedback. And so we have this delay here to ensure that the servo actually reaches that position um, <clears throat> before it makes the next, uh, before it adds to the next position. So uh, the left setup here is moving a lot faster because it's just driving the servo to the beginning and the end position. Uh, and what I've done here is I've placed a little delay there so that it dwells at those positions before moving back to the other position. So you have a chance to take a look at that. You can certainly create this same loop uh, and drive it in a similar manner uh, on this side, but I've used, uh, this is almost the exact code that they have in the example. And so I've tried to keep that uh, the same for you. And that's why the movement's slightly different, but you can see, um, you can clearly see what's, what's going on there. Uh, and again, uh, with this one, you're limited to probably 12 servos. This one can run three, but they'll be hitting the same position all at the same time. Uh, and with this guy, again, addressable, so you can go in the code, uh, send it a an, an address for the group, and then an address for which one of the 16 servos in that group, driving 64 servos, you, s you send the data from the microcontroller, microcontroller can forget about it. It just, it just, it goes to that position and it keeps it set there. And the other thing is, so if you lose the signal on your, on your, uh, from your microcontroller to this servo, this servo, um, it'll, uh, it'll try to sit there for you. So as long as you have power, the servos will try to sit in, in those positions. Um, So, benefits, um, the only drawbacks, I think, are that uh, the space that, the extra space that these boards take up. Um, it's almost the same size as, as the Arduino Uno, but I think the, uh, the benefits far outweigh um, any of the drawbacks. You have extra power going here, right? So power consumption is going to be a little bit different, but if you have a big project with large numbers of servos, I think it's definitely, definitely the way to go. All right. So <laughs> thanks for, uh, thanks again for spending time with me. Um, I hope this gives you a, uh, a good idea of, you know, what you can do uh, to control your servos in your own servo projects. And uh, if you have any questions or uh, comments, please leave them, leave them below. Uh, as always, like, subscribe, and share so that we can continue to make these videos. And 
We'll see you in the next video.